and welcome to Finextra. I'm Hannah Wallace and today I'm joined by Tristan Blampede of Pelican and we're discussing open banking and APIs. Hello Tristan, thank you very much for coming in and speaking with us again. It's great to be here Hannah, thanks. Firstly, what would you say are the key challenges faced by players involved in open banking such as the banks and smaller new fintech entrants? Well, to work out what the key challenges are, I think we need to look at the different parties individually. So first of all, we've got the third party providers. One of their biggest challenges is going to be dealing with the myriad of different APIs that will be in play in this new open banking ecosystem in the absence of a standard being defined at a regulatory level. There are various interoperability and conversion tools available that can help them with that. Mm -hmm. For the banks or ASPSPs as they're known in, in PSD2 speak, a uh, big challenge is going to be how they remain competitive mm -hmm. in the new open banking world. Um, one potential way that the traditional banking players could address this is by themselves re-registering as a third-party provider and offering third-party provider services to their client base. And then there's the smaller fintech uh, type players. Uh, a big challenge for them is, is going to be um, that they sometimes won't have the infrastructure mm -hmm. to get registered themselves as, as a third-party provider with their local national competent authority. So there's a real opportunity for them to partner with larger third-party providers and effectively piggyback off the license of those, those bigger players. Now, that there are some important regulatory aspects around consent around data management, around transparency with, with the end customers when embarking on such a partnership. But provided those elements are dealt with correctly, there's a real opportunity there for, for the smaller fintechs and the, the larger third party providers to, to partner. And what that will mean is that the technology of the, these fintechs can reach a much wider audience. So I think over the coming weeks and months, we're going to see some very interesting announcements around collaboration in, in that space. All right, and you've mentioned there a lack of a single defined API standard, which of course there's some concern about across the industry. So how big of an obstacle is this to providing a truly open and interoperable market? It probably poses the biggest obstacle to the third party providers. How do they cope in an environment where they will have to support lots of different APIs that have been published by the parties, by, by the banks that they're looking to exchange data with? And arguably it will detract them from their core offering, their, their core proposition around account information or, or payment initiation services. This gives rise to a real use case for an API conversion an interoperability tool. So using such a function, the third party provider could support as little as one API for payment initiation, account information, or both. And the interoperability tool will simply convert that into whichever API has been published by the party, by, by the bank that they're looking to exchange data with. Now this applies equally to a bank who wants to offer third party provider services in the new ecosystem and, and as we discussed before it's important that banks look at doing that to remain competitive. And finally Tristan, what are some of the compliance and security concerns that come hand in hand with open banking and the involvement of authorised third parties? Well the, the really interesting thing about compliance and security in an open banking context is that there are so many different facets to it that it requires lots of different technologies to come together to enable a properly effective fraud and, and compliance application within that environment. So that's technologies like IP tracking, malware detection, various biometrics, authentication, and then there's the transaction risk analysis and, and fraud monitoring. Now, transaction risk analysis and, and fraud monitoring are actually mandated under PSD2. So for an open banking compliance and security solution to be properly effective, it will require the ability to effectively package up lots of different solutions, lots of different technologies and put them together in one single environment. Tristan, this has been great. Thank you very much. My pleasure, thanks. And thank you for watching.